Well, we'll do integrating with respect to y to find area. So the general idea here is so far, we've looked at essentially vertical rectangles. or Riemann sums. And therefore we've worked with dx. Uh, but we could also work with horizontal rectangles for our region. So we could also work with horizontal region rectangles. For finding the area of a region. in which case we can use dy instead. So for example, let's say we want to find the area of the region enclosed between the line y equals one, the equation y equals square root two x plus one, and the equation y equals the square root of two times four minus x plus one. So essentially y equals the square root of eight minus two x and the square root and then plus one. So if we wanted to use dx, then we would essentially need to split this into um, sort of two separate regions. So if we wanted to use dx, then we would have two regions, right? We would essentially do under the first square root between y equals one and the square root of two x plus one square root of two x plus one. And then we would do the second part where we would do under y equals, or sorry, above y equals one and below the square root of eight, eight minus two x. And then plus one. And we could do that, that's fine. But we could also use y. So if we used y, then essentially our slivers that we are looking at would run from this first square root across. So we were just looking at a bunch of rectangles running across between the two functions, and we can actually just use one region. So if we used y, we can do it all as one region. So essentially what we need to do is we need to rewrite those functions as functions of x instead of functions of, sorry, as functions of y instead of functions of x. So we will rewrite uh, y equals the square root of two x plus one and 
y equals the square root of eight minus two x plus one in terms of y, or in other words, solve for x. So if we take our y equals the square root of 2x plus 1. Then we have the square root of 2x is equal to y minus 1. Or 2x is equal to y minus 1 squared. And then we get x is uh, one half y minus one squared. Similarly, if we take y equals the square root of eight minus two x and then plus one, we have the square root of eight minus two x is equal to y minus one. So eight minus two x should be y minus one squared. That means negative two x is y minus one squared minus eight, or x is y minus one school, sorry, negative one half. times y minus one squared and then plus four. So essentially what we have is our picture becomes we have an f of y and a g of y. So we'll do f of y as the one on the left is uh, one half times y minus one in parentheses squared. And we have a g of y on the right, which is negative one half times y minus one squared plus four. Then we have y equals one on the bottom. So when we look at our rectangles, essentially, we're going to take the x values, which are these g of y's, and f of y, and subtract them, and then multiply by the width dy. So we are looking at g of y minus f of y for the length of our rectangle, multiplied by dy. In terms of the values we're running from, we're going from y equals one up to the intersection point. It turns out that that intersection point occurs at two, three, so we're running from y equals one to y equals three. So we can write this area as we're running from y equals one to three, looking at dy. And the larger of our x values is that g of y. So we should do g of y minus f of y. So we are looking at the definite integral from one to three of g of y minus f of y. This becomes the definite integral from one to three of g of y was a negative one half times y minus one squared plus four. Then we are subtracting off one half times y minus one squared 
dy. This is integral from one to three of negative in parentheses, y minus one squared plus four dy, otherwise known as the definite integral from one to three of a negative y squared, and we would have plus two y minus one plus four dy, or definite integral from one to three of negative y squared plus two y plus three dy. Integrating, we are therefore looking at a negative one third y cubed plus y squared plus three y, evaluating at one and three. So again, all I did here was we set up, we figured out horizontal rectangles instead of vertical rectangles. We look at the farthest right minus the left. So for my subtraction, we did farthest right. minus the left. Other than that, it's the same integration we're used to doing. And so from here, we are looking at negative one third times three cubed plus three squared plus three times three. Then we are subtracting off negative one third times one cubed plus one squared plus three times one. Let me update my screen. This becomes uh, negative nine plus nine plus nine is nine. And we are subtracting off. We have a negative one third plus one plus three. So that's a uh, negative one third plus four or a positive 11 thirds. So we have nine minus 11 thirds. That's 27 thirds minus 11 thirds is 16 thirds. So in this case, our area is 16 thirds. So again, you are not required in this you don't have to do this using y. We could have done our two separate regions in x and found our two um, sort of two integrals separately, added them together. But you have the option to instead work with y's. Um, this is a nice preview into our next section when we will be working with volume. And sometimes we will want to do our integration with respect to x, and other times we will do our integration with respect to y with volume.